Okay, sorry for the late start at recording. Um, I just pointed out on these hidden codes in these brackets, uh, what you change here is what will affect these. You can't, you can, you can edit certain things here. So let's just say I didn't want this person's middle name, like Joseph Leon, if I just say didn't want that there. I, I could edit that, but like I said, if we go to update these fields, um, I could just have it update, but if you if you do change any of the tech, the wording like forward, I did forward from introduction, you have to update the entire page. And when you do that, yeah, see that Leon came back, so. So if, if you do want to change these, um, you can go down in the persons uh, themselves in the headings. Um, and likewise, you know, here, this family, the starting person, Clarence, Benjamin, and Gladys. So if you look here, okay, here's the table of contents, family, starting person. They use the TC, and then here's that family Clarence Barron. That's Clarence. Uh, the T, here's the hidden codes that change that wording. So that corresponds to this right here. Yeah, that likes highlighting. Uh, so that's how you can change the wording. Um, one thing like a lot of people also common commonly uh, complain about is like, okay, you get blank pages. And that's, well, typically if you got the mirror margins and if you're ever going to have the book professionally published, you really should have the mirror margins because basically that will keep the inside margins to have greater margins uh, to account for well when you open up a book, you know, for the gutter size. Uh, some people don't, and likewise, then new new sections tend to start always start on an odd page. If you open up any book, that's the way it usually happens. But if you're really wanting to pinch pennies and, and uh, not do that or don't have any blank pages, you can select it, uh, select all, and then let me. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, go under layout, page setup. Um, yeah, and then for these new section start, you can always change it to a new page rather than an odd page. And now you won't have any blood blank pages because um, be, by default it, it always goes to starting on an odd page and that's what the section breaks. Uh, when we get down to combining books, if you, if you look at the books, this first paragraph is always uh, the same. Uh, let me just do that because that's Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, I open up the descendants. Let me open up the ancestors book. John. Yeah. Are you manually putting the section break in there for every time you want it? And what's no, the reason? no, no. Family book creator already does it. The, these these files I'm using right now are fresh from Family Book Creator. Uh, Family Book Creator puts in the section breaks automatically. And yeah, so you, yeah, see, you can see here, it says section break odd page, section break odd page. If we go back to up here, the, the uh, by doing that one change, they're now saying next page, you know. So like I said, you can keep it that way. This is strictly only if you don't want any blank pages whatsoever. 
And like I said, it is industry standard to have the new section start on an odd page. So um, this is for those few that really don't want that. Um, that's how you can do that. Um, so now on these um, ancestors, yeah, the title, introduction. But see, this family of the starting person is always the same on each one. So I always pick which book is going to be the master that I'm going to bring everything into. Um, invariably, I do it on this Descendants book. And then so the Ancestors book, I know all I got to do is get past their kids. So basically get rid of this first section. Get to the families of their ancestors. ancestors. And I'll bring up and I'll just basically bring delete everything in the front page. Or yeah, yeah. yeah, you can practice this all, all day long and then when it's all And then when you um, do it live, then it's starts misbehaving. Okay, shift, control, home, delete. Okay. Yeah, hold it. I, yeah, sorry. Something. Okay. So just start with that. And then likewise, we don't need duplicate in uh, indexes. So I'll just delete the index of places. And then now I can just copy that. And then uh, where do I want to insert it? Uh, well, it always starts generally after the first section, so. I'll do the first section and then I'll just paste it in here. So that's so going to start now with his ancestors and then followed by their descendants. And then I'll also be copying in um, the um, ancestors of Gladys. So let me just open up that one. And then again, I'm going to just delete this first section. I could tell it not to do this first section, but uh, it, it generally just, um, I don't know, it might screw up the, the number counts. Um, it, it might not, but. Uh, and then likewise, let's get rid of these indexes of places. Now I can select that. So now this is the ancestors of my great grandmother. And paste that. Okay, so then I'll just change this. So it's now the ancestors and descendants. And then likewise, now up here on this header, now I may want this to say ans uh, the ancestors and descendants. And then now you'll have to pay attention to now because sometimes from the section breaks that they'll carry over. Uh, Okay, yeah, this time it didn't. Well, actually, this one is, whoops, that one is fine because this is their, their descendants. Okay. 
Now we're starting with his ancestors. Now here's one of the things I'd like to change. So rather than just saying his, I'll type in Clarence's. This is my great grandfather. And then likewise, if I want the table of contents to show up that um, as well, I change the spelling here. And this is what um, changes it in the table of contents. So that's the first generation. Okay. Okay, this did, okay, didn't carry over. So now it's saying ancestors of Charles Clarence Benjamin Hall, because this is just his ancestors. So that's nice. Uh, and this is stuff where like some of my word knowledge is lacking a little bit, because sometimes maybe it's it maybe exactly where I do copy and paste. Sometimes the, um, the header carries over and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not exactly sure what I do, do where sometimes it, it does keep it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we'll see, there's a way to change it so it doesn't carry over. Let's just see if there's an example later on. So after, okay, that's the second generation of ancestors. I purposely did a short book for this. Okay, so now here's the, um, Lattice's descend ancestors. Then likewise, I'll change the spelling over here too. Okay, okay, and yep, that's still saying ancestors of Gladys, okay. I think it's whether or not you're getting the header from the section or you're getting the header from the whole book. Yeah, yeah, and and there there is a way that if if you are getting the section from uh, from the whole book, um, you okay, yeah, because that's see, it's saying it's calling it out as the as the odd page and even page header from section ten. Yeah, there's. Uh, Yeah, there. Uh, let's see where. Yeah, there's a way where you can tell it say don't automatically copy from the from the previous section. Um, yeah, you link them. Yeah. Or you don't link them, as the case may be. Yeah. So let's see here. Da, 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 yeah, there it is. Header and footer. Yeah, that's family. I'm just. That's the descendants, okay. Okay, yeah, this case it, it it I copied and pasted in the right way, but yeah, there is a way to um to unlink them. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll have to look that up again. So, or it is in this case, it, it did actually work um, the way I wanted it. But then, yeah, see, like down here now, these index of individuals. This will be for all of them, so I'll want ancestors and descendants. So, this for, yeah. Then, likewise, once done, now. 
Uh, okay, we're okay. I'm still in the header. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just for a second because the word is. Just copying some of my stuff. Okay, there we go. I'm sharing the screen again. Yeah, I still had I still had the header page open, so. I'll select it, turn on, update the entire table. Okay. So now if it goes up there, then like here on the table of contents, it says, yeah, so now it says here, family of Clarence's ancestors, family of Lattice's ancestors. So, uh, and likewise, you can use the same technique because um, if you scroll down here and see these codes for, um, you know, an index of individuals, if you'd want to say throw in, say, an appendix, you could just add in those codes. Uh, let me just maybe go up before here and let me just uh i think i've got yeah i've just got this uh, it's nothing important but it's just a good example if i'd say I want to make a uh, an appendix Okay, I just typed in that. And, you know, just, okay, I'm just kind of lazy, so I'll just kind of copy that and put it there. And I'm going to just call it like appendix. Call it. You know, you know, and you could put in subheading stuff like that. You know, so if you got multiple items in the appendix, you can do that. So we just update this entire table. Let it update, I'll zoom up to the front again. Yeah, and so see now here I've got an appendix uh, label here. So, so that's really, so if you want to add your own sections, it's that easy. I mean, I mean, it was just kind of a bogus document. I got this from Stefan on this. Uh, it's just something in Latin. But, um, and we don't have to worry about page numbers because Word takes care of all that. So, um, and that did columns and stuff, but, um, but yeah, so if you'd want to add your own appendixes to the book, you know, maybe maps of family homesteads, uh, stories that maybe don't fit one particular person, but, maybe an entire family or branch, you know, you can do that. So, um, let's see here. Oh yeah, here, here's this when we clicked on to, yeah, this uh, right now it's not linked to previous. This is where you would check or uncheck. 
you know, so if it was carrying the header from a previous section and you wanted to change the header, that's where you'd do it. Right now it's not linked. Uh, so, um, and the link to previous, it's the previous section because this is like section 12. So that's where, where you change that. So yeah, link to prior. It, it would actually say unlink, you know, so then that will detach it so it doesn't copy from the previous section. So, um, well, in a nutshell, that's kind of what, uh, well, let me just point out, um, if you ever do just look at some of these things, uh, you know, the XE, Hall, Emory, Okay, that means, okay, it's gonna be under the heading H for Hall or H for Hall and Hall, Emory, Levi. This is how it, the name will appear in the name index. Uh, same thing for places, uh, XE, USA, North Dakota. Uh, Cause I, I have it reversed the order. So, like I said, sometimes if you just look at it, uh, and then, like I said, there's plenty of websites, there's plenty of books, big books available, you know, if you'd want to really dive into what all these hidden codes mean. But uh, that's what they are. They're all in brackets. And like I said, you turn, turn it off because they don't print in the book because here's how this looks in the book. But then if you turn it on, you can see all the hidden codes. And these are all, so it's, it's indexed by the places and uh, the names. So, um, so in a nutshell, that's kind of some of the stuff I've learned uh, doing Word and the various books I've done. Um, does anyone have any questions about it? I have a couple questions, John. Okay. Um, the first one is um, up where the um, the tr the table is. Can you go up where the? Yep. Uh, right, right there. I don't know what you call them. Um, well, the table of contents you want, right? Um, yeah. where where um, I don't know how to adjust the the lines where they're faces are oh, 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 oh right there yeah and so if i want to add one in or i need to move it around i just i don't know how to do it um yeah i don't think that's actually something easy to do um okay i, yeah. I went through it manually i went through it manually and move or change them all I, yeah, yeah. Because this it's is all done using like frames and lines and stuff like that. It's um, difficult with all those lines in there. Yeah. Um, okay, the other one is you showed us how to um, pin pictures. Um, mm -hmm. So when I bring in a picture, um, I right click it um, and you go to like, um yeah the size and position yeah and you pick you can pick left center right and it pins it to yeah yeah and, and now yeah and this is mainly for like if, if you're going to bring in a word document to be displayed mm -hmm. uh because yeah because it Word defaults to like these absolute references. Now, now th these are pictures that Family Book Creator already placed, so it doesn't matter. It knows where it's at. What right, would be you, is like if if you brought in a Word document for media to print where you had some media, then that's where you don't want to use absolute because then uh, and you'd want to use like relative positioning. Um, uh, let me go to mine. Um, so at, when I bring a picture into my Word document, if I insert one, um, uh, 
and I and I pin it every time I move that picture I have to repin it even if I slightly move it I have to repin it it's so cumbersome every time you know um, what I mean yeah let's well yeah actually this is a this is a good example with uh pinning it event images um yeah mm -hmm. yeah rather than uh let's see here that i do so what was shelly's question a comment i i didn't i was trying to follow what she's trying to do uh well, if you bring in a Word document to print, like sometimes the media can get messed up or positioned. And that's because like yeah. Word defaults using absolute positioning. Well, that yeah, doesn't. I was trying to understand what she was trying to do though. I mean, what? Um, so if I bring in a picture into this Word document, I want to insert one, right? Yeah. And I move it around and I put it where I want to put it. I you click on layout options and then you click on um, see more. And then there's the position, text wrapping, or size. Yeah. And yeah. you had shown us how to click alignment left, center, or right, and it locks it in to follow the whatever paragraph I'm putting that picture into. Yeah. Can you go to position, the position tab? The, the align, if you click the align and you put it for center. Right there. Yeah, you, you, and if you maybe you want to maybe, well, yeah, you, well here you can do like an alignment right. So it'd be on the right margin. Right, so that's what I've been doing, and yeah. it works really well. But the minute I want to adjust that picture, slightly move it up mm -hmm. or down or enlarge it, now I got to go through all those steps again. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, well, by moving it like this, well, you're 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 forcing it out of the position. Mm -hmm. uh, There's no way around it. Yeah, because I mean, if you're going to use like an alignment left, well, it's going to be uh, on the left margin. I mean, you can scroll it down some. Um, if I don't do that, it could end up on the next page. Why like not use text wrapping, uh, if I understand what you're trying to do? Yeah, I, I mean, that's just something with Word. It's like, that's just something... Uh, I, I have tried the text wrapping. I've tried right. every and, option. And that doesn't work for you either? Text wrapping? No. Finally, when this, when John showed us this, this is what worked. And so now I just do it <laughs> on every picture because yeah. I got 500 pages and I just don't like it when things move around. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I generally just try to keep it to the left or right or, you know, or at least get it kind of situated where you want it. Mm -hmm. And then start, and then remove the absolute positioning. Okay. So, I mean, that's just something with Word, and it's. Okay. Because, so. yeah, because see, you want, you'd say it's left, but now I said, oh, well, I actually want it over here. Well, it's not on the left anymore, so. Uh, you sometimes want to move the picture for, like, the text. Um, no. when you get it on there, the text is, you want it to go say around it or, or whatever. You can use text wrap, but it's not always exactly the right place that you want it. Yeah. But. yeah it's, yeah. I, I have used, I went through this process based this, this winter that John's taken us through. And I was, after a couple of things I've learned the hard way, uh, number one, I had to do three or four drafts. Uh, so, you know, first, second, third time, you're not going to get it right. But I ended up using text wrapping for my Word documents to 
have the picture wrap appropriately around the text. If I added text, it's, I, it was just a move the, move the uh, picture and I, I didn't have that problem. But I, you know, some, a lot of trials and tribulation as compared to the positioning approach. That's mm -hmm. why I was kind of curious about that. Yeah. Um, that's... And I found that sometimes it just pops it to any part of the, like maybe even to the next, just like Shelly says. I, I, again, I found it, it's sort of dependent on how you initially, uh, which option on text wrapping you select it and how is whatever else is. Most of the time it worked out, it was for me, it, most of the time it worked as I expected it. Uh, the text wrapping as composed to, as composed to the position approach. And every now and again, like you said, if for whatever reason, it would slide the picture to the next page. Um, and I forgot what I did about that. Now, my only other last question, John, is at the very, very end, um, an index of places, mm -hmm. I get these little tiny red boxes mm -hmm. and I don't know what they mean. <laughs> I've updated um, um. my whole document. Um, and red boxes um little tiny red boxes and i don't know what they mean or if they're gonna oops. print i guess i should try to print and see if it will show up i think it shows up so yeah, see I how mean, you, have, yeah. you have your colored dots which i don't have i i, I don't yeah, know how to do i that mean yet. i've got i, but I, I have, yeah this is the color coding I don't know how to do that yet, but um, I have these little tiny red boxes that just rent, just not on everybody. So I don't know what it's trying to tell me. Is it red boxes or red underlining? Little little tiny red boxes right next to uh, their name, right next to where you would have the green dot would be a little red box, but it's oh, not on right. everybody. Yeah, right there. Little time, and I don't know what it means. Uh, do you have a color coding associated with that person? No, I don't know how to do the color. Family tree color. maker? Mm -mm, not yet. Uh, I'd almost like, say, could you send me like a screenshot? And sure. I can. But you said that was the places, not the indexes of individuals, right? Yeah. Uh, I think oh. it's on both. Like, let me look and see. I mean, it may not make a difference, but. Um, or, or, yeah, it's on both. Like, it's have on you both. resolved all your places? Well, it, is um, it something like you you could share your screen and we could, if you want to, I'll try. Not? Yeah, I'll try. I don't know how to do. I that. think I have to stop sharing. Uh, let me see. I think yeah, you should be able to share your screen. Okay, let me try here. I didn't actually find the, the color coding helps um, with the finished product. Oh, there's one. Okay, do you see? I don't know what you're seeing. On oh, Baden, what, yeah, Burtonburg? On under yes. Baden. Yeah, right there. Let me see if there's any. Let me shrink it down. Um, there's only one there, but let me go to index. Oh, yeah, there's one. Top. No. Yeah, see, that almost looks like. I think you'd have to go back to the individual person and look at them go, and see go, what. Yeah, there's something. Go, go look at like the Anna Beck in Family Tree Maker because that almost looks like a color coding option. You think? Maybe. Um, okay. Yeah, here, I'm going to bring up. Uh, I'm I, um, I'm just bringing up Family Book Creator on my computer here, but yeah, that looks like uh, a color coding option, and you're telling it to use the symbols. Uh, okay. Because that's under 
Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's the geometric symbols. But uh, here, let me share my screen here. How do I unshare? Um, go all here. I'll here. I'll share my screen so that will wipe out yours. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Under preference, in your family book creator, look under preferences, report styles, and format. Mm -hmm. And then down here are markings used by, mm -hmm. and my guess is you're, you've probably got something like maybe geometric oh. symbols. Okay. Uh, or another thing, if you, if you don't want them at all, really under uh, indexes, just make sure include color coding is unchecked. Mm -hmm. Then they won't show up. Oh, another thing on that book, if you look at that person in the book, do they mm -hmm. have that red square on in, in their family tree chart? Uh, uh no, they don't. They don't have. Well, uh, that that well, that is another option. Um, that maybe look, yeah, may, maybe you got the color coding turned on on the indexes, but you got it shut off. Okay. Um. Or was that yeah, written? maybe maybe you don't have this option checked for the family okay. chart. They include color coding. But yeah, that okay. looks like a color coding, and somehow you got to switch to the geometric symbols. And mm -hmm. but if you go to the, the Anna back in your tree, my I, I guess you you do have a color associated with that person. Okay, I'll go check. So thank you. Yep. So, are there any other questions or just any general questions? Uh, do you use the styles, John, like when you start a book or? The styles? You, yeah, the styles in, uh, in Word under home. Oh, um, let me look at that. Uh, was there a oh was there a, on the style? No, the uh, here. Let me share just so everyone else will. It depends. I answer the best I can. <laughs> so, so you're talking about like here's no spacing type these up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The these I don't really play with. Like, like I said, I'm far from a word expert um you I don't mean, want to touch those unless unless you're really wanting to spend a lot of time reformatting yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I, I know i mean i i don't even know how many countless revisions i've done on these one books i published it's like you know i've probably done 60 revisions just on playing with uh, the media and the sizing and which media do I want printed and which ones don't I want printed and okay this one I want bigger and then spending a lot of time on the order in which the media uh, does so it's I, I actually try to do as little in word as possible with family book creator books uh, I, so I, that when, when I do updates later on, I don't have to redo this stuff. And, uh, and I, mean, I do was, use Word a lot. And I have to say, excuse me, that the if you've used a program before to get it to here, and that and that program has already formatted it and done all this automatic formatting for you, the second you start twitching any of that stuff with the with that formatting from Word, anything you do, you're gonna to have to redo it if you pull in a new version. So don't yep. do it. No, yep. That's all I can tell you, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, cause I mean, it's like uh, this one for a uh, cousin that was helping me proofread, she didn't always understand like some, some of these things that I had to do in Word. Like there's one, well, it so it happened, it was like her son well, he he uh, he had a girlfriend. They had a kid. They never got married. But then later on, he did marry, and they got like two more kids. Well, 
family book creator, okay, you got one relationship, one marriage. Well, it d just defaults to, okay, they had two relationships. And then the first relationship's this, second relationship's this. Well, my cousin really, really hated that, that phrasing. She said, <laughs> okay, here's this relationship, here's this marriage. So it's like, so I manually changed the word for, for him. It's like, okay, he had one relationship and one marriage. And then so, okay, here's the details of the relationship. Here's the details of the marriage. And But she didn't understand. It was like, okay, I did that one change, but then we did some other rearranging. So I had to regenerate the book. And while this one time I didn't remake that change, well, she pointed it out again. It's like, well, I thought you already made that change. Well, I regenerated the book. So it's like. And, and, you know, so it's, like I said, that's, it's like, just get everything good and then do those final edits. Cause you don't want to have to keep making those edits. Uh, so. Seldom. Here's the definition of seldom. Not often, rarely. So, Thank you, John. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Anything at all? I have one. I okay. think I bought Family Book Creator b before one of my updates, and I appear to have lost it, but I'm not entirely sure. I may not have bought it. Is there a way to find out for sure? Uh, you, well, to see if you actually bought it or not, you'd probably have to send an email to support at familybookcreator.com. Okay. And then Stefan can look up your details and and tell you, okay, we've got a record or we don't, or uh, I know uh, if you well, I mean, I've had it, to change you know, computers and all that other kind of good stuff. I've lost all my plugins. Yeah. So. Cause I mean, yeah, if you, if you do got it, they say, oh yeah, here, here's your registration code on, 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 uh, on the website. Uh, let me go back to sharing my screen. Uh, you can always download um, the latest version. Let's just go to Facebook here. And then Family Book Creator. So yeah, right here, Stefan always keeps, you know, the latest builds. Uh, the Mac version is 748, uh, Windows version 660. Either one, the, this text is the same. They both got this download area. Okay. You just click on it. Um, and then you select your version, you know, if your family book or Windows or Mac, or like I said, it, maybe you still only got the 2017 version. Just click on the download. Um, and then here's the current executable. And okay. then, and if you haven't done it, download this, uh, uh, the user guide, the user guide. Okay. If for no other reason, um, you know, if you just print out, I mean, this is like 111 pages, um, but this appendix, this two page here, here are the, uh, the custom media categories it uses. Mm -hmm. It gives a brief to start description about it and then the page in the manual to read up more about it. Uh, and then also with the custom back types. So if nothing else, print out those two pages. Uh, and if, and uh, the spelling has to be exact. And if you ever, uh, That there is a quick way of entering them because um, in the file section of the family book creator group, there is, let's see, it's probably down here a ways. Oh, uh, the, um, but it, uh, 
Well, there's this, uh, this is a tree file, F FBC categories, 2017. Uh -huh. I made in 2017 version. Uh, you don't, uh, it's, it's a tree backup. You just restore it. And then uh, it's got one person and one media file. And the person's name is to be deleted. Uh, and, um, um, and then it's got one media item that, that then that will automatically bring in all your media categories. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so you don't have to type them in. Oh, yeah, awesome. Uh, and then likewise, if you got multiple trees, you just uh, merge in that 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 file. I mean, you, uh, once I mean once you download it, this is a backup, so you got to restore it first. Yeah. Uh, and then you can merge it. And then, like I said, you can delete the that person and even delete the media item. Uh, I don't remember what it is. Just some public domain image I found. And okay, uh, it works real good, John. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can and you can use the same technique if if you've got other trees where you know you got like custom custom back types, custom media categories that you like to use. Just create a person that's got all those custom backs, all those uh, um, um, and attach a media item and then assign those media categories and you can export it. Mm -hmm. And then that way any new tree, you just bring it in and they're there. That's a really good idea. But, but you have to, but you, the person has to have any of those custom packs attached to them. Someone also said, well, I've got custom place names. Well, you'd have to give them facts and that person has to have every one of those place names in it, you know? So same thing would be if you got custom sources. Um, you just got to have a person that has them, you know, you can have a person with a thousand facts if you wanted, but. Right. And then, like I said, you can delete the person, but everything else remains. So, but uh, then somewhere in here, there is also, a, oh, yeah, FBC media categories that tech. This is just a text file. Um, you know, this is what I first did. So it aided, so you could just copy and paste, you know, copy, paste. But then, uh, I came up with, I, I don't know, I think Stefan gave me the idea for putting it in a tree file. And then that way, then you just got to import it, no typing, no copy pasting. And okay. So excellent. So but let's see here. You do a, a previous Word document session. It sounded like it when, like when Shelly was talking. Did I do a previous word? I, I mean, I have done other documents. This will be posted in the uh, uh, in YouTube on, on the YouTube channel. Um, whoops. This one here. Yeah, this one will be posted there, but then in all the other ones, it will be there. Uh, yeah, and here in the featured posts and in the latest. Uh, uh, user guide here. Um, there's even, uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's even a link to it here. Well, as, here's the Family Book Creator Group. And then there's also a link to um, the YouTube channel. But is that the one on, on specifically for Word? Well, this is where all the family book creator and all the charting oh. companion classes go. Okay. So, so this is, so here's like the one that uh, we did with Rebecca Shamblin because she created a book and she went through her process. Hers, of, her, hers was very uh, word oriented. Yeah. And so if you, if you are intending to use, insert word documents into the, to the family book, create a, a word file and do all of that stuff. Her session was 
excellent partner. Yeah. Uh, she talked about um, things to the detail of your audience. Is it your grandparents, your kids, the font sizes? Um, yeah. How to? Because I think her background is um, something with pr make presentations. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah, because she she definitely didn't use the standard family book creator layout, and right. I mean. She did some heavy, serious editing, uh, like it, creating Word documents and then bring them into the people. And then so, um, so Family Book Creator didn't do much for generating, you know, the narrative and stuff. It's like right. she had those Word documents already done. And right. that's what I used to, for, for the first two generations, I used Word yeah. documents to add to the, just made it kind of a little bit more interesting, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and this is one we did the same class twice. Now this first one, the video isn't as good because I think her husband was, her, her husband or kids were using like a lot of bandwidth when uh, she was doing it. And so her video, so her audio wasn't the best. But so the second one, it's a lot better. So if you're gonna watch any of them, it would be this later one. Yeah. yeah. But then, yeah, I've done some classes here on like media using the full page editor. Here I did a thing for creating a combined book, which I kind of re showed on here. Uh, some of these beginner classes, and these are kind of the same class. They kind of cover some of the, you know, rookie mistakes. And these first beginner classes, we actually usually recommend don't even worry about the media initially get the narrative, get your sentences to print the way you want them to print. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, here we just did some Q&A sessions, you know, not, didn't talk about anything in specific. Um, oh, um, so. Yeah. I ended up printing out the user's guide, um, no. FBS, FBC user's guide, no. power bound it and because that's how much I had to reference it. Yeah. Yeah, and something else I found, uh, yeah, here I'm just, yeah, I, I printed out too, I keep one. Uh, one thing I did notice, uh, if you use like Lulu or something, the, the PDF file is print ready. Yeah. So if you'd wanna get it uh, professionally printed, you can. Yeah. Uh, I did like Lulu Express. I haven't actually had one printed yet, but you know, it's like eight bucks or something. Yeah. Plus shipping. Yeah. That's so I, I mean, it's not like it's super expensive, but yeah. so I was thinking, like, if I go to the Roots Tech when it's in person, then I might have one printed and then bring it to have Stefan sign it. <laughs> <laughs> John, I have a question on the in index of places. Mm -hmm. um, is that defaults to one column, or can you have two have it come out to two columns? Uh, that's an option. Uh, I have it. One. I have it default to. Uh, I have it default to uh, two columns, but you know, you right on here, here you can select it one, two, or even three columns. Okay. Okay. And individually, do the same thing for the uh, index index of individuals. Okay. So you can specify. So, but yeah, it's like I default it to two, but so. Any other questions? No, if not, we can uh, sign off and this class will be. I guess one question, John, would be yeah. what, what are some of the projects people are doing just out of curiosity? I mean, I'm, I'm learning from other users. So what, what kind of books are they creating? No. Anybody wants to share? 
I created a book on my own, writing on my own, of Atsimedian charts and maps. And it took me about six months to get it right. I mean, the data was already there. Mm -hmm. And then my granddaughter's husband had, um, I, he didn't know anything about his family. So I got all of his data together and it took me two hours to generate a book through Family Tree Creator. And they keep, every time I see the family, they thank me so much. They keep going over and over it. Um, that was pretty cool. So I got two more books planned and they're gonna be Family Tree Creator mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, these one books I did for, uh, well, it's an extended branch for a cousin of mine. Um, so some, some of them are relatives of mine, some aren't, but uh, she, um, we, we actually did three books. Well, one thing she really wanted, Spiral Bound. Uh, so that kind of limited how many pages per book. So on, on her, uh, let's see, yeah, on her mother's side, on, well, on her father's side, it's just one book. I was able to do an Ancestors and Descendants of, and it started from her grandparents. So their ancestors and then all their descendants. So I'd get her first and second co first cousins, second cousins too, or uh, I get some of her close cousins. So the other book, well, her, her mom just came from too big of a family. So that we had to split it into like just an ancestors book and then a descendants book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like we ordered between those three books. I think last count was like 147 copies. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and and then that's not even counting my other books. And so, but no. Um, I, I did a book um, that finally came to fruition this spring. Um, I've been working on it for a few years, not, not continuously. Um, it was um, all the Heshka family from one, all the descendants of one couple in the Heshka family. Um, and there's probably about seven or eight generations after that. Um, it was about 600 pages and uh, 900 family members and uh, I think 400 media items. And um, I got Lulu to, to print it and send it straight to North Saskatchewan, where the where the family reunion was. Um, when I went through the through the book, I, I one of the the little portrait pages pictures. Uh, actually, what I did was I took out um, all the charts to the third generation. Mm -hmm. I, I just I took them out manually, and uh, and then it ended up that some of the people. Like in those later generations, the the picture was the, the portrait picture wasn't that big, the one that's that stands that's beside them, so I enlarged those all by hand by manually I guess too. So um, I didn't put in the I, I didn't put in an index of places because I needed to cut down on some um, some of the pages. It was already getting pretty big, um, and. Um, Let's see now, what else? Um, yeah, I used the, I used Word for, for uh, like the first couple and then the 10 descendants of that couple um, and their wives, like their families. And it worked out really good. Uh, I, I kind of used Rebecca's uh, format. Mm -hmm. And so that it was um, the family chart on the left side and the, and the narrative started on the on the right side. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so worked out pretty good. The family was well, it was well received. Um, they, it came in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I get like each one of them was um, something like five and a half pounds and there was 75 of them. So they, <laughs> they were, but uh, yeah, it was, 
it was well worth it, I think. So, yeah. I did that. Actually, uh, doing the back end, the final preparation of a book, and it's probably end up being se several different types of books for my almost 90 year old mother. She spent about uh, 30 years doing genealogy and putting it all into Family Tree Maker. And between you know her age and the new evolving technology and her declining eyesight, she's reached a point where uh, she, you know she just can't turn it into a book. And uh, so you know it's sound on the the data side. So I'm using that. And uh, I'm using uh, the first one that I'm building is um, I'm combining the two families, uh, my father's family and her family. And uh, then I'm using a combination sort of a, you know, what John has showed us and then what Rebecca, I'm really turning out to use heavily word mm -hmm. and uh, I'm putting it after the chart and I'm building the pictures in there. I also, uh, as a hobby, I do photography and I'm really into Lightroom and Photoshop. So I'm able to, you know, bring that expertise into it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, it's, we'll see what it's like. This is, you know, I'm brand new at this mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'm envisioning that I will then do a book, um, only of, um, my mother's uh, descendants so that because she's there's multiple different families within that it's so huge uh, I just felt like you know I can't get it all in one book so I'll do her line and then I'll do one for my father's and uh, so so we'll see um, you know how it goes John yeah one thing one thing that uh... Um, I think many people forget about is you put a lot of work into creating your books. I did one for my mother's family back in 1999, and it was about 285 pages. This is before I had Family Tree Maker, Family Book Creator, or anything else. But we we created the book, and I had uh, family members. Uh, advanced subscribe to it because we did hardback and this is 20 some years ago but what i did stumble across is i actually went to i emailed uh, the library for that town where the family was from and i got the library to actually buy now you might want to give them but I got the library to actually buy two copies of the book mm -hmm. in in giving it or sending it to all of your relatives. Don't forget about trying to get it into the appropriate local library for all the rest of the relatives that may not be on your list. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, today for me, that 285 mm -hmm. book, 85 page book is now 2,500 pages because of all the research I've done and I can't print it in one book. <laughs> yeah. But do consider getting a copy into your local appropriate library. Yeah, that's what I did. I yeah. just good to the library in Kenora so, so everyone can see it. I, mm -hmm. yep. I did I just, that too. Yeah. I, I, I just um they just paid me the cost of like what it cost me. And then if they wanted to give me extra, that was up to them. Um, but that worked out for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there and there there's certain things too. Uh, I don't know if every state genealogy society, but uh, I'm in Wisconsin, the Wisconsin State Genealogy Society every year, they actually give out an award for the best family history book. Mm -hmm. I haven't submitted any of mine, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I but I am a, like a board member on it, uh, like a district representative, and so it's like you never know. It's like you know you you can always like submit it for approval and stuff. So 
And but then you can also check, you know, certain things that they want is uh, it's got to be numbered. It's got to have a bibli at least a bi bibliography. Um, and like a table of contents is ideal. So, but um, but you know every and like I said, I don't know. This might just be a Wisconsin state thing, you know. But yeah, you never know. We were in Jamestown, uh, North Dakota library doing research for my husband, and the librarian there helped us a lot. She made me promise that I would give her a free book mm -hmm. when it's done. So uh, I told her I sure would. She sure deserved it after all the help that she gave us, all the information yeah. we found. Uh, my, my book is probably a little bit different. Um, instead of having ancestors and descendants, I did it on relatives, uh, my relatives and my wife's relatives, because I have one tree with all, both parents and, and yeah. And so I took that approach. And also I did not have that much history per se, but what I did have in my mind and talking to people were stories of past family members. Yeah. So, you know, I would start out with my wife and I, and then our parents and her sister and our kids, and then our, our grandparents and uncles and things like that. And along as it through that, I was able to attach stories to different people who, 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 just a page with maybe a picture if I had something along that lines, yeah. and um, and and then in the back I added um, uh, one to two pages of a family reunions that we've had since 2011. So things like that. So it's it's more geared in my case to my immediate family because. Everybody else is gone. <laughs> yeah. 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 St stories are what make the books interesting. And, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, you may know what they did and where they're born and died and traveled to and from, but, you know, it's, you don't know so much what they're like personality wise. And so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the book I was doing for my mother's family. <laughs> and I think, Patty, you said you're from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> um, uh, my family was from Dayton, Ohio. And my ancestor ran a meatpacking company. So the first 100 pages of the book I have is just the history of the company. And, you know, uh, newspaper clippings and things that I was able to get from the, uh, the, li the library and stuff. So, you know, it, it has as much local history as it did family history. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the things that I think we all have is a story is, uh, for example, in my book that I just did, uh, I have the pandemic 2020. <laughs> so I think if you think about what you had to do and how your family got through that, you know, Zoom calls and staying at home and buying toilet paper, whatever it is you had to do would make an interesting story to your next edition of, of your book. So think about that as a story for each, all of us. Mm -hmm. I did that in my book and I contrasted it a bit to um, the Spanish flu of 1920. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I had some very significant relatives who died and really left shattered families. Uh, they died of the Spanish flu uh, in in 1920. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. The thing I was going to ask you, John, is um, um, I mean, this wasn't a big deal, but it would have made it a little bit better. Um, is there a way to put to make uh, chapters in the book, or is it just like I did? Um, did the families, you know, um, a whole family at a time, not the generations? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, there... I think that I think that's how this one was laid out. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you can do chapters. Um, oh, actually, I guess I'm not sharing my screen. Um, 
I, I don't know exactly how you would you would do um Would you just put them in manually or? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly where you'd want to split it chapter wise. You know, if you'd want it, you know, cause they're kind of divided well by, this This is by family. So this is just kind of split up by uh, the children. You know, here, my grandma, Dorothy, well, she's the oldest of 11. But yeah, I mean, if you would want to somehow I mean, they're kind of split already by generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would want to put in actual chapters, I mean, yeah, you can just add in the, uh, you know, like if you go before that family of de his descendants. Um, In the book what do you that have wrote, in mind when you say chapters? What, when yeah. you say, what do you envision when you say a chapter? I mean, I guess, yeah, wherever you'd want to put it. I mean, you can just put in, you know. Well, I, I had um, uh, 10 descendancy lines, 10 main lines. So each one of those went in, would go into a chapter of its own. Um, and it would go all, all the way down to present day. Okay. But like well, I said, well, well, like I said, um, they're kind of already split up. But like I said, if you would want to do, you know, a, a case of like on Dorothy here, um, let me just see where. Page 50. No, that's not 50. Let's misread that. That's second generation. When, when I did my book they were all Swedish immigrants and and most of the book was by family like this but I started out with topics for example immigration every one of them immigrated and the families all immigrated differently and so I talked about in general immigration naturalization homesteading which they all were doing that mm -hmm. and and then the Spanish the Spanish flu Mm -hmm. which impacted all of them yeah. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did you put that all at the front I put the that at the I put that at the front yeah mm -hmm. I did I, I just did I don't know this yeah, was so I didn't use family tree maker so mm -hmm. you know, I, I just said totally in word won't be doing that again <laughs> mm. Yeah, here's something like they work good together if you've got word and family book creator like yeah so like what you could do is like say something like this you copy this and uh you know maybe say okay this is you know chapter one you know okay you know, say something like that, you know, and then do that for each child, okay, chapter two, chapter three, or child one, child two, you know, I guess however you'd want to. Um, okay. Well, like I said, on the table of contents, they are kind of already uh, kind of split up that way, I mean. Yeah, I, I highlighted it, all the people that were in that like the, all the descent, the ten descendants, I I highlighted their part or like where where they started, but, um, or made up bold, I guess is what I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just said, well, chapter one, you know, but or maybe or or Matt, maybe rather than doing the individual. Um,
Or maybe rather than doing a separate line like this, um, you know, maybe just add it here, you know, after one. And then the table of contents picks that up. Yeah. And then, yeah, in the hidden codes here, then do after one. And like I said, you don't have these don't have to be the same. This this first part, this is what prints in the book, you know, right here. If we turn off uh, the hidden codes, uh, what you put in 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 these brackets is which will what will go to the table of contents. So they don't have to change at all. I mean, I mean, if you don't want chapter one here, you don't have to. You could still have, say, chapter one display in the table of content. Um, Good, thank you. Yeah. Oops. No, I hit something. No, oh, here we go. So. Update and then yeah. So it says yeah, chapter one, Dorothy Hall and Ruben Ingvall Waller. Then, like I said, we could do the same thing here for Helen. You know, chapter two, Louise three, Dwight, uh, Mildred four, Dwight five. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm down in my case for chapter 11 for Emory, you know, so, so. Anyway, well, anything else? Else, well, then I guess uh, we'll sign off for this class and then uh, I've got a charting companion class coming up here, so. Um, well, like I said, if you got any questions, just feel free to post them in the um, uh, in the user group. So, okay, sign off. Uh, here, I'm going to sign off, but I'll be restarting this, so it'll be the same link. So, is that for the uh, okay the charting uh, the charting? Yeah. One? Charting canyon class, so it's okay. the same link I've, and everything. So I think I've I've uh, signed up for that. Yeah, because I will be using a Python script to download your ancestry matches. So oh, um, so maybe I'm not quite ready for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't tested an ancestry, I probably wouldn't even bother. Now, unless you've got general questions about charting companion. So okay, but that's what that one's going to be about. So anyway. And you're going to be um, stopping it or recording it? Yeah. Yep. They'll be recorded. So, okay. Take care, everyone. Yep. Thank you.